Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So this is the video to make up the class that we have missed. Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss about the optical transition and how we analyze uh, the optical transition. Uh, and we we need to apply the perturbation theory to be specific. We need to, to apply the time dependent perturbation theory so that we can come out with the transition probability and from that we will uh, derive the Fermi golden rule right so first before we jump into the uh, to the calculation of the transition probability let's look at the perturbation theory so what is perturbation theory Perturbation theory is a tool which allows us to solve complex physical and mathematical problem approximately. So based on this uh, theory, we first identify the most closely related problem, uh, which is zeroth order with the known solutions. We then adjust the solution by analyzing the difference between the initial uh, state and the final state. The main assumption is that the difference is only a small perturbation or disturbance and we can obtain a accurately approximate solution uh, more easily than solving the problem uh, more exactly. Right? So during our uh, free electron model right, or nearly free electron model, we actually have uh, solved the case for uh, free electron inside a crystal right inside a crystal lattice and when we turn on the weak potential provided by the ions that we have in the crystal that can be considered as a weak perturbation to the free electron system right and that if you still remember in that uh, in that derivation we apply time independent perturbation theory or uh, it has another name which is Rayleigh Schrodinger perturbation theory so this need to we can we need to solve this uh, non degenerate perturbation theory for non degenerate condition and if you have degenerate condition we need to apply or we need to invoke the degenerate perturbation theory Right, so basically for non-degenerate perturbation theory based on the nearly free electron model it happens whenever our k values is far from the the uh, the the brilliant zone boundary okay? and the uh, degenerate perturbation theory we need to uh, we need to invoke the degenerate perturbation theory whenever our k is close to the boundary of the brilliant zone right where we have the degeneracy between the bond and the between the bands and then the the, the solution will be slightly different as we have seen in the previous discussion in our previous discussion so today we're going to look at the time dependent perturbation theory right so time dependent perturbation theory uh, is a method that allow us to estimate the final state of a system right whenever we have or, or we introduce uh, perturbation which is dependent on time towards our initial system right and okay so if a system has initial time t is zero and the hamiltonian h naught which is time independent this is the original or zeroth order original Hamiltonian and is at an initial eigenstate psi k so this psi k is the eigenfunction for the original Hamiltonian operator so under an external influence described by H prime now which is now is the time dependent so this is h prime is the perturbation that we introduce right h by h prime is the time 
dependent perturbation that we introduce into our system and we know the system will change its states for example a molecule moves close to an electrode surface to feel an increasing interaction with the electron electrode the combined hamiltonian is given as this is the full hamiltonian is equal to the original hamiltonian at t is equal to zero which is time independent and combined with the perturbation uh, given by the time dependent hamiltonian h prime okay and the wave function of the system corresponding to the combined hamiltonian should be a linear combination of the initial eigenstates so this is what perturbation is about we can write the solution for or, or the wave function of the new system or, or of other of the perturbed, perturbed system as a combination or as a linear combination of the initial eigenstates psi n so psi n is the initial eigenstate that our our uh, system has so basically for the initial states we can write this in term of all right we can write in term of this we change the color all right so this is the hamiltonian original hamiltonian on our psi n will give us the eigenvalue of energy psi n all right so this is the initial states so once our Hamiltonian we once we have introduced the perturbation into our Hamiltonian we can write it as in this equation just a linear linear combination uh, of the original Hamiltonian with the perturbed Hamiltonian right so what we want to find is uh, so basically this is the initial states and once we have introduced the h prime the state will change right which is this uh, since our perturbed um, since our perturbation is dependent on time so therefore at t is equal to zero the h prime is zero and after some time right uh, the, the states will change into final states right f referring to the final so this is the initial so we want to study now what is the state at any time t right we know it will change from this initial state, initial state to the final state but what happened in between how the, the state changes at any time and secondly we want to know the probability of the transition from one state to another state and we can write whenever the perturbation perturbation is absent or we turn off the perturbation h prime t is equal to zero all right we can write our wave function to uh, to be in this form all right the total wave function is equal to the summation of the cn t which depends on time psi n whereas cn is the proportionality coefficient right let me write proportionality coefficient of the wave function right and sin is the original eigenstates whenever we have turned on our perturbation now the h prime is no longer zero right so we can write the solution of the final state given as this which is the summation of the c and t is the coefficient okay the same coefficient we have now the phase term this is the phase term because of we have the dependency of the time it changes over time so we need to add this phase multiply with the original or the initial states so our goal now is to find what is cn because once we have no, once we have um, 
we have the information about cn we will know the states we will know the final states of the transition because this initial state is already known right we are this is already uh, well understood we just need this term which is cnt which is the proportionality coefficient cn and secondly we want to know how can we calculate the probability of the transition right probability of the transition <coughs> so to so in this problem we need to apply our time dependent perturbation theory and uh, let's apply for a specific case all right because we mentioned in the uh, i did mention we want in this video we want, we need to discuss about the optical transition all right optical transition meaning we introduce light into our system so the perturbation comes from the light which is the em wave and from that we're going to calculate what is transition probability and we will come across the fermi golden rule uh, eventually <coughs> so we are curious of how light interact with matter for example semiconductor all right so by employing the first principle the first principle method we need to treat this by considering the interaction that may happen in our system all the possible interaction that can happen in our uh, system so for example in the case of semiconductor this is very uh, interesting because we have the band gap right the band gap in between the balance band and the conduction band and we know based on the experiment once the electron has enough energy which is higher than uh, or equal to the band gap the electron will have the probability to to be excited in the conduction band right so because of this conduction band and valence band are made from many states right, or with continuous states which is separated with a little different in terms of the energy right so there's no there's so many states for the uh, initial states and there are so many final states so in this problem to make it simple we just we just select one final energy which we call it e2 and the initial energy from the valence band which we call e1 okay so these states correspond to the psi 2 and this one this psi 1 is uh, corres uh, the, the energy 1 correspond to the psi 1 the wave function uh, of 1 and to make our our calculation or derivation rigorous we once we have done once we have calculated the probability now we can do the summation or we can do the integration for all other possible transition that we can have in this continuous uh, band all right so that leads us to the two level system because we only consider e1 and e2 so it's two level system and we're going to analyze this using time dependent perturbation theory so for now let's consider uh, the perturbation is turned off so the h prime is zero right so initially t is equal to zero at t is equal to zero we know the electron will occupy e1 instead of e2 right and the total wave function for this transition is just equal to the wave function of the states uh, of the first states and eventually at t is equal to infinity Okay, t is equal to infinity. We have probability for the, the electron to occupy in the E2. So in that case, alright, so in that case, this um, this total wave function can be just uh, provided by the psi 2, which is the state uh, referring to the eigen, uh, referring to the E2. So we want to know what happened at any time t in between this t is equal to zero and t is equal to infinity. 
right we want to know what happened at any time t and at uh, and and we we based on the uh, based on the perturbation theory we can write the total wave function in this form which is equal to the c1 which is the the proportional t coefficient just now multiply with psi1 xt plus c2t psi2 xt right and whenever at t is equal to 0 we know c1 right at t is equal to 0 is equal to 1 and c2 is equal to 0 but at some time once the transition has been made we know the state c1 is equal to 0 and c2 will become 1 All right so in the end our total wave function just to become psi2 for the t is equal to infinity and it's become psi1 whenever t is equal to 0 or at t is equal to 0 so as we go along we actually don't need to know the psi and h prime to solve this but in this particular case we want to introduce light as the perturbation right so h prime is is known in, in our case but it's not necessarily if you want to solve for the transition probability you can just leave this h prime as it is right we're going to see when we introduce our light as the perturbation what what will our h prime be in that case later on all right but we need to introduce the psi psi one which is dependent on x and time and based on the separation of the variables that allow us to derive the time independence chronology equation from the time dependence chronology equation right we can write our wave function 1 is equal to our, our psi 1 is equal to psi 1 that depend on x multiply with a term which is depend on time e uh, to the power of negative i omega 1 t so omega is equal to e 1 divided by h bar right e 1 divided by h bar same goes with psi 2 psi 2 can be written as psi 2 which depend on x a multiply with a, a term a exponential term uh, e to power, to power of negative i omega 2 t and omega 2 is equal to e 2 divided by h bar all right and now what we do now is we insert this relation back into the total wave function that we have in one so in that case, we will end up with the total wave function uh, in this form, given as 2, right? C1t, psi1, that depend on x, and we have this uh, term which depend on time, e, negative i, uh, omega 1t, plus c2, psi2, e, negative i, omega 2t. So that's our total wave function. So now let's introduce our time dependent chronology equation. Time dependent chronology equation can be written as this i h bar d psi t. This is the total wave function x t divided by dt is equal to the Hamiltonian on the psi t or the total wave function. Right, so remember now we set our h prime is to be zero right which is depend on t of course to be zero okay so what we do now we insert two which is the wave total wave function into the time dependent chronology equation right once you do that you will end up with this very long term so in the left hand side you have four terms on the right hand side you have two terms Alright, we have two terms in the right hand side. Okay, so this actually the first two term comes from the differentiation of uh, with respect to time, uh, and then you need to do this uh, differentiation uh, by product, right, or uh, by parts. So and and in the end you will end up with these two terms that we have here 
same goes with the second one right but we know about this this H Hamiltonian this is the original Hamiltonian apply on psi 1 all right will give us the energy eigenvalue 1 psi 1 same goes with H psi 2 will give us E2 psi 2 all right and we also know that E1 is equal to H bar omega 1 Right, E1 is equal to H bar omega 1 and by inserting these two known solution we end up with this because we can cancel out the other term so basically we can cancel out this term and we can this can be cancelled out since H Hamiltonian on psi 1 is just equal to E1 psi 1 and we have already that term on the left hand side then we can cancel out so we are left just, just with these two terms and it's equal to uh, zero at the right hand side so i h bar dc1 over dt e negative i omega 1 t psi 1 plus i h bar dc2 over dt exponential of negative i omega 2 t psi 2 is equal to zero so this is uh, it seems like we are stuck on this because we are we are actually we actually we want to find what is the c1 and c2 but we have we end up with a single equation that contains both of the c1 and c2 so we are stuck at that but we actually can do a little trick by applying the inner product based on the orthogonality of the psi1 and psi2 because psi1 and psi2 is the eigenstates uh, for the Hamiltonian right so they are orthogonal to one another so we apply the inner product in this equation all right we applied it on the whole equation so we end up with, with this we apply the inner product uh, of the psi 1 first and then psi 2 all right and once you do that you will come to this term this term we know is equal to 1 because it refers to the uh, the square of the wave function or we multiply with the, its conjugate right so we end up with a we end up with the probability all right so based on the orthogonality of psi 1 and psi 2 this will be 0 right so we end up with a very simple much simpler equation like this and from here we know that dc1 over dt is equal to 0 and when we look at the right uh, when we apply the psi 2 right uh, on the whole equation that we have here in, the, in this box we're going to cancel out this to become 0 we only left with the second term here and this to become 1 because it's psi 2 and psi 2 and we will end up the same with a DC, DC2 over DT is equal to 0 so what does that mean? it means that it means that at any particular time or at, it means that without any perturbation the electron at the E1 which is represented by C1 will never excited will, not, will never make the transition to E2 so it will stay forever at E1 as, as long we didn't introduce any perturbation right so same same goes with this this means that if we have electron already occupied the e2 which means it will stay at that states forever as long we didn't put we didn't perturb our system so it means that when there is no perturbation the electron will stay in the state forever right so in, in the case of e1 it will stay at this e1 forever as long there's no perturbation right so as, as soon as we introduce perturbation so this is no longer correct so we will going to have uh, a transition rate so the probability for this transition is given by c1 
which we know C1 is depend on time squared. So that will be the probability of the transition and same goes with this C2T. Right? Oh, sorry. This C1 T squared, when we square our C1 term, it will give us the probability of the state being occupied. Right? It will give us the probability of the state being occupied. So now let's turn on our perturbation by light. So now we introduce a uh, small disturbance to our original system. The origin system as, as discussed before right now we introduce h bar omega l this is the energy of the photon h bar omega l l is the uh l is the frequency of the light all right and so the perturbation now is given by h prime and this is provided by the uh, perturbation by light Okay, so this is the total wave function that we have seen before. What we need to do is we insert in the time dependence chronology equation, same like before, right? So the, the difference is just in the right hand side, it's no longer equal to zero, it should equal to the, 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 the perturbation that we have, perturbation terms that we have introduced, right? So what is this h bar? Oh, sorry, h prime. What is this H prime? That depends on T. So in the case of light, we know light is consists of electromagnetic wave, and we have the electric field component and also magnetic field component. And the electric field component can be written as this: Kx uh, E naught cosine Kx minus omega Lt. All right, but when you uh, look at our <coughs> our system for example we are applying this for the case of a silicon atom atom of silicon or any, any other semiconductor right and since our wavelength of the light for example blue is 400 something 450 let's say and the atom experience or the electron experience electric field almost a constant actually because the wavelength is so much longer compared to the size of our system all right so we can we can assume that this kx is equal to zero it is constant all right so this is a, a case for uh so our perturbation now is a constant over uh distance constant perturbation but it's not constant over time because we know it will propagate and after some time the the electron or the system here will go back to its original state whenever the h prime whenever the light has passed through our sample or whenever uh, the light no longer shines on our system <coughs> so we can write this electric field term in this in this situation but to, uh, we can also write this or we need to write this in the form of Vx potential and it's given by the negative Q, Q is the charge uh, we do the, the integral of the energy, uh, of the field, electric field over dx and finally we can write this as in this form and this is the H prime this is the perturbation that we introduce into our system <coughs> okay like i said uh, like i said just now we may uh, if you want to calculate what is the transition probabilities we may not we we can just let h prime be as a h prime we don't need to introduce what h prime is but for this case we want to solve for the specific case of the perturbation by light so just uh, so what we did is we just replace this h prime with this vx term 
the potential given by the the oscillating electric field that we have in light the electromagnetic wave so same same like before we insert this total wave function in, into the time dependence Coulomb equation and we have this and same like before we apply the inner product so that we can separate the C1 and C2 otherwise they are both in the same equation once you apply the inner products we are left now with a much simpler equation in the left hand side is when you project the psi 1 in the right hand side when you project the psi 2 into the time dependent Coulomb equation this term which is not equal to 0 and also not equal to 1 because this is psi 1 x and psi 2 so this is not equal to 0 so we cannot apply the orthogonality case here so this term will be as it is and for now we didn't discuss what uh, how to solve this but this is actually called dipole matrix element same goes with this one dipole matrix element so we don't need to look at this because uh, eventually we want to find the transition rate right so any term which is not dependent on time will not disturb our uh, our derivation here so we let it be like that so what we need to do from these two equation we need to solve this using the differential equation but not like a uh, uh, usual uh, differential equation because it's quite complex we need to introduce some initial values for the time right and when I when I write this um, rearrange basically we rearrange this equation that we have uh, up here I can write this as here and this whenever whatever we have in this bracket is the term which is not dependent on time so I can just make it or I can just let it be as a divided by I right a divided by I this is all the, the term which is independent of the time so therefore we can write uh, the dc1 over dt because remember this is c1 and c2 is what we, we are looking for is what we, we want to calculate so we put it as uh, we write it we bring everything else to the right hand side right so dc1 over dt is equal to this and dc2 over dt is equal to this so now we need to do initial initialization t at the time step zero right so what we do now is we apply at t close to zero or almost zero right we know c1 is equal to one and c2 is equal to uh, c2 is equal to zero right and let's insert this c2 see this uh, symbol here it's not exactly but we assume it to be zero or we that's the approximation c2 is equal to zero into a we insert this we end up with dc1 over dt is equal to zero okay which means c1 is equal to one you can see because of the c2 squared must be one the electron must occupy the lower e uh, states which is e1 so for the b equation equation b dc2 over dt we initialize t close to zero we know c1 is equal to one so we can write this uh, we can just eliminate that c1 because c1 just equal to one now we can write this dc2 over dt in this form 
and to find the C two T, right? C two T, C two is depend on T. What we need to do is we just need to integrate this from T is equal to zero up till T after some time, right? So we have all this term same like before. And to do this, you it's easier if you introduce uh, this relation cos x is equal to half e i x plus e to the power of negative i x. Right. So once you have uh, right, you have written in that form, you can do the integration easily, and you will end up with this. It's a new term for the c two t, and this when you simplify it, it will become. Uh, this form so we have additional term of the sink right sink of the uh, by the way the this this delta omega is equal to omega 2 minus omega 1 since be before we have this omega 2 and omega 1 which refer to the uh, which relates to the energy 2 and energy 1 before right so this is the change or this the the difference in in, ter in term of the omega between the two <coughs> So this now we have obtained an expression for C2. How do we turn C2t into a physically meaningful quantities? So first what we can do is we can calculate the transition probability since we know the C squared, the magnitude of the absolute value of the C2 squared will give us the transition uh, probability. For example, when we do the, when we solve for the squared uh, of the absolute value of C2, we have 0 0.1, which means we 10%, uh, we have 10% probability of the electron occupy higher energy states. For example, we have 2 there, so we should have 20 over here. Or let me, maybe for it, to make it easier, just make it 1. Right, so we have one over there, we have another four here. So this referring to 10% of probability for the electron to occupy E2 at a particular T time, which is not equal to zero because of the perturbation. Right? So because the perturbation is dependent on time. So after T sometime we we know that some of the we have the probability of the sum of the electron to occupy higher states and if the value is given 0 0.1 that means 10 percent probability of the electron to occupy uh, the e2 and we can calculate what is the transition rate transition rate is just given by the transition probability the square of the absolute ma uh, magnitude of the c2 divided by dt and this we, we can relate this with the generation rate and uh, spontaneous emission spontaneous um, stimulated emission and so on so this is uh, important for many application optical based uh, and also spectroscopy okay and let's solve for the first um, quantities first which is the transition probability so what we need to do is we need to take the absolute value squared of the c2 and c2 is given as here all right so now we we insert back what we uh, have represent a as before a is should equal to the uh, term which is independent of time term which is independent of time so this is the a just now and we squared this we squared the t term we squared also we squ uh, square the sink term all right and this is still complex what we want to do now is we want to represent this into much simpler uh, expression and let's look at the last term here sink and when we plot the sink squared uh, over the change of the uh, omega minus omega l Omega L is the uh, relate to the energy of the photon, like I have written uh, just now. Okay, so we're going to have this term, the the black one, 
differ at t is equal to 0 and at t a slightly higher t after some time it will turn into this rate function which is you can see it, uh, it increases or right, it spikes at t is equal to infinity we can say that it now looks like a delta function so that's exactly what we do for the equation for that term we can write that uh, in term in term of the 2 pi divided by t and this is direct delta fun function all right so let's in introduce this back into our c2t terms all right so this can be cancelled out we have one t that's come from the sink and we also we already have the t squared before so this will just to the power of one okay and now we want to calculate what is the transition rate which is the second uh, meaningful parameters that we want to calculate out of c okay so it's equal to the transition probability uh, transition rate written uh, represented by this w12 referring to the transition from one to two states and what we need to do is we need to the differentiation of the absolute squared uh, magnitude of the absolute value of the c2 squared All right and then uh, that should be easy because we only have t to power of 1 so this will be oh not that one uh, so our our so our t will will disappear so we end up with this as as a term for the transition rate and this is exactly the fermi golden rule so if you look at the equation here the transition rate doesn't depend on time at all so we don't have dependency on time anywhere in the equation so based on this fermi golden rule we can say that the first is this transition rate does not depend on t that means the trans transition rate is a constant which is uh, very intuitive because once you heat up a uh, material we know the, the electron will absorb the energy and it will contribute to the uh, increase in the temperature of the uh, of the of the material right and then we know the temperature will increase slowly instead of just increase um, in, in, instead of the fluctuation of the energy uh, of the temperature and so on so we, that is that represent that shows that this transition is a constant transition rate is a it's a constant and that also explain why our absorption coefficient is not dependent on time so when we measure the the absorption coefficient of uh, of a material it doesn't depend on time when you measure again after some time it will be the same because the the absorption rate is constant All right and secondly e naught squared which is this term here we have it squared uh, e naught is referring to the electric field provided by the em or the photon right and when we square the electric field we will end up with the intensity which means the number of transition is dependent on the intensity of the light so the more light we introduce more electron uh, will will uh, occupy the uh, or, or more number of transition can be made but in this equation we still have this delta function which is meaningless because it's only one value right so therefore need some integral for this equation to be uh, to be sensible but actually when you look at the first treatment or first our first discussion we want to apply this for continuum final states in the conduction band right so later on we still need to 
do the integration or the summation so that it will consider all the probability of the transition uh, between the initial state and all the the continuum final state that we, that we can have in the conduction band so in general for any perturbation h prime we can write the fermi uh, golden rule in this form all right so that's why i mentioned earlier we don't need to introduce uh, the the what h prime is in this case all right to solve for the transition probability the uh, transition rate given by this and if you want to calculate the transition or uh, or derive the transition into continuum state instead of e2 the single state all right so this is the initial state from the valence band and we have uh, many states in the conduction band right and and the states are just separated by small change in the in, uh, in energy and the energy difference between the states in the conduction band is very very small so the total probability the probability now we should consider all the possible transition so we need to consider all the cf referring to the final states squared and to do that it is useful if we can introduce this term that we have seen before which is the density of state because density of state we integrate over de we uh, it will give us the number of states right it will give us number of states so this integral makes sense and when you in, uh, introduce what is cf in, into this equation we will we'll end up with this we still have this delta function so we need to apply this integral over de and this integral over de will eventually we will end up with this term only remember this is the dipole uh, matrix element dipole which is not so uh, which is not solvable solvable for now dipole more matrix moment and this is probability to find the transition rate we need to differentiate this over time so in an uh, finally we have this term right so this term is basically disappear so this fermi golden rule is used to calculate probability of transition between two states and also their lifetime lifetimes of the transition but we didn't do this uh, we didn't calculate the lifetime uh, in our uh, derivation today but this is what the fermi uh, fermi golden rule is about and finally the spread of energy of the final states which transition occur is naturally connected with the heisenberg uh, uncertainty principle relation which is given by let me okay given by the uncertainty in energy multiplied with uncertainty in time must be equal or higher than h bar so therefore that's why some of the uh uh, that's why this the the states the electron occupy the states uh, or the spread of energy in the final states for the electron uh, for the electron to occupy so basically the electron will occupy spread uh, energy in the final states so one is there one is here one is here and so on so that we have this term energy right and it's related to the heisenberg uh, and it's naturally connected with heisenberg identity uh, principle relation all right uh, that's all what we want to discuss for this uh, video uh, thank you very much